In this video, I'll show you how you can create this impressive PowerPoint roadmap infographic step by step. First, I'll show you the best and easiest way to design this kind of infographic, and later on in the video, we'll add animations. So, let's go! Hello, my friends, it's one skill helping you skyrocket your PowerPoint presentation skills. And now let's jump into this empty slide and let's do everything from scratch. And as you can see, this slide comes with a beautiful paper background, and this background can be found on freepick.com. Link is in the video description if you'd like to use it as well. And now, my friends, let's decide what would be the best way to create this kind of curvy shape. And of course, we could try using all of the PowerPoint tools, such as the Freeform Shape tool or the Block Arc tool. But using all of these tools is actually not the most efficient way. Let me show you how we can make it happen really fast and easy with Figma. And Figma is a free online design tool that will help us do exactly what we need to do. And by the way, if you have never worked with Figma and you would like to get to know this tool better, then I would highly recommend jumping into Skillshare, the largest online learning community for creative people like you with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity and more. And I'm sure you'll find classes about pretty much any topic that you wish, including Figma. And this week I was looking for information on how to create illustrations using Figma. And I stumbled upon this awesome class, Illustrate and Figma Create Your First Digital Illustration by Ludvikas de Savages. And Figma is usually used as a web design or app design tool but it is actually a quite powerful tool for creating vector illustrations and infographics. And what's super awesome is that we can export Figma illustrations as SVG and use them in PowerPoint, which is perfect. So I was really happy when I found this class that focuses specifically on creating vector illustrations and Figma. And I will be able to create that roadmap shape in no time. And if you would like to check out this class on Skillshare as well, then I will leave a link in the video description. And the first 500 people to click the link will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare, which is super duper awesome. And Skillshare is the place where you can explore your creativity and try out new things. And the summer is the perfect time to invest in yourself and dive into your creativity and sharpen your skills. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's keep on going. Ok my friends, so let's log in into Figma and once we log in, we should see a window that looks like this, that's nice. And now let's click on this blue button and let's pick a destination, I'm going with drafts and over here we have a brand new Figma file. And next let's select the frame tool and on the right side let's pick the presentation layout. This way we have inserted a slide into Figma and now let's hold down the control key and scroll until we can see this little grid. And we'll be using this grid to draw our roadmap shape and if you don't see that grid make sure that pixel grid is activated and snapping to pixel grid is activated as well. And now let's select the pen tool, you can just hit P to activate the pen tool. And now we can basically snap along this grid. So let's just click once to start drawing this line. Let's go four squares to the right. And of course you can draw any shape that you wish. I'm going four squares up. And let me make this line a bit thinner. Let's go with 0.5. And now let's go four squares to the right. And next let's go four squares upwards, four squares to the right. Now let's go to the bottom. And let's actually go three more squares to the bottom. Let's get back up. And next, let's go four more squares to the right, four squares downwards, and four squares to the right. So I'm basically trying to keep four square distance between all of the turns. And as you can see, this shape is really small because we have used this small grid to draw it. But now we can scale it, okay? So let's grab the scale tool. You can just hit K to activate it. And you can as well hold the Alt key to scale it proportionally just like that. So let's just scale it a couple of times until we can see it on our slide. That's nice and now let's get back to the move tool and now if we wish we can set specific dimensions for this shape. Let's lock the aspect ratio and for the width let's use for example 1700 pixels. That's nice. And now let's make this line a bit thicker. So for the line width let's go with for example 70. And now let's make this shape rounded. So for the starting edge and the ending edge of this line, we can choose round. And now let me show you a trick how we can quickly make this whole shape rounded. So over here we have this corner radius tool that we can select and drag. And you can basically make all of the turns fully rounded. That's pretty awesome. 
But let's go with something more subtle. Let's try using 90. And I like the way it looks like. And next, if we wish, we can rename our shape. Let's call it Roadmap. And now we are pretty much finished. We can export it. So let's go to Export Settings. Let's choose SVG and let's hit Export. And now we can get back to PowerPoint and finish designing this awesome infographic and adding all of the animations. So let's get back to PowerPoint and let's go into the Insert tab. Let's go to Pictures and let's look for that SVG file that we have just exported from Figma. Here it is looking beautiful. Let's make sure that we convert this guy to shape so that we can edit this shape. And for the width, let's actually lock the aspect ratio. And for the width, I'm going with 30 centimeters. That's nice. You can, of course, use any dimensions that you wish. Let's make sure that this shape is nicely aligned in the center of the slide. And now if we right click and go into format shape of this shape, we can actually see that this shape is actually a line. It has a width and we can of course change its color. So let's pick a new color. And that's my friends is really super duper awesome. And now let's check what else do we have to create. And now we can create this dashed white line in the middle of the road. So to make it, we can just duplicate this shape. And now let's go into the format shape. And of course for the line color, let's use white. And now we can make this line much thinner. So let's use two points for the line width. That's nice. Let's make sure that this white line is perfectly aligned on top of the first line. And of course, in the format shape options, we can change the dash type. So let's choose, for example, this one. And now this line looks like a proper line that you can see in the middle of the road. That's nice. Okay, my friends, and next let me show you how we can create that little white outline and a shadow for our road. So first of all, we can just duplicate this uh, gray line, okay? Let's go into the format shape, let's make it white, and let's make its width actually a bit bigger, a bit wider than the gray line. Let's go with 42 points, let's send it back, and let's align it with the rest of the guys. And this way we have pretty much created that little white outline. That's nice. And now to add a shadow, let's make sure that we select everything by hitting Ctrl A, and let's group all of these three lines into a single group, just like that. And now we can jump back into the format shape options, and let's add a shadow. So let's go to shadow settings and we can choose any preset, any shadow preset that we wish, for example, this one. And for the shadow color, let's go with the same gray color. And for the transparency, I'm using 50% for the blur, 15 points. And for the distance, 15 points as well. And skadoosh, this way we get this beautiful shadow. That's nice. And now to save some time, let me grab the slide title from my previous slide. Here it is. Let's copy it. And by the way, the font that I'm using in this text box is called Joyful Mountain. Link is in the video description if you'd like to use the same font as well. And next, my friends, let me show you how we can design those pins that we have along the way. And to create these guys, we'll have to use the teardrop tool. So let's go to insert shapes. Let's find the teardrop tool. Here it is. And now let's just draw a teardrop. Let's rotate it so that it is facing downwards just like that. Of course, you can pick any fill color that you wish. Let's add a white outline to this guy. That's nice. And now let's jump into the format shape and let's make the line a bit thicker. So let's use two points for the width. That's nice. And now for the shadow settings, let's use the same shadow settings that we have used for the road. So let's pick the same gray color, transparency 50%, blur 15 points and distance 15 points. That's nice. And next, let's add a circle with a number inside of this pin. So let's go to insert shapes. Let's find the circle tool. Hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle. That's beautiful. And let's use no fill for this guy. And let's use a white line for this guy. Let's choose white color. And for the width, I'm going with one point. Okay. And now let's place this little circle inside of the pin. And now we can double click this little circle to enter some text. So let's just type in one. Let's select the text and let's change the font to Joyful Mountain. That's nice. And let's increase the font size. Let's go with 36. That's looking beautiful. But as you can see, the number is sticking to the top of the circle. So let me show you how we can fix that. Let's jump into the text box options and let's add a bit of top margin. And now the number is sitting in the center of the circle. That's looking beautiful. Okay, my friends, so now that you know how you can design these pins, let me actually delete this guy and let me copy all of the pins from my previous slide and let's paste these guys into our slide just to save some time. Okay, and one more thing that we're still missing is a little beautiful yellow car 
that we can see on the first slide and the asset itself comes from freepick.com link is in the video description and as well on the first line we have a bunch of animations so let's check them out on the full screen and first of all as you can see all of the elements on the slide basically zoom in with a nice slow motion effect and after that we get this little car that follows the whole track that's super duper awesome so first of all let me show you how we can create that nice zoom in effect with a slow motion effect and after that i'll show you how we can make that car follow the track okay so let's get back to our slide and for now let's delete all of the animations that we have in the animation pane let's do everything from scratch and now let's jump back to the first slide where we have all of the animations and let's select the slide title as you can see it has three animations applied to it and let's copy those animations so we can select this slide title and hit alt shift c to copy all of the animations and let's paste them to this slide title on the second slide and now in the animation pane let me zoom in a couple of times so that we can better see all of these three animations and now let's check out these animations once again and with this kind of combination of animations we're getting a zoom animation with a slow motion end which is super duper awesome by default you don't get these kind of animations in powerpoint that's why by combining a couple of animations you can create something custom that looks like this a zoom animation with a slow motion end that's nice and to create this effect we'll have to use three animations and the first animation is basic zoom with animation duration of 0.5 seconds the second animation is grow shrink animation where we are shrinking the object to 50 percent and the duration is really short 0.01 seconds and the last animation is grow shrink animation once again but this time we are growing the object to 200 percent and at the same time we're applying maximum smooth end okay and this is where the slow motion uh, part comes from because we're using that uh, smooth end and for the last animation we're using duration of 1.25 seconds and by combining these uh, three animations we get the basic zoom slow motion effect and next we can double click the animation painter and paste the same three animations to the rest of the shapes on the slide and let's make sure that only the first animation starts on a mouse click and the rest of the animations start with previous which means that on a single mouse click we should see all of the animations just like this that's nice and let's check it out once again still looking beautiful okay my friends and next let me show you all of the animation magic that i have used for this little yellow car and as you can see in the animation pane this car has a bunch of little yellow animations and all of these animations are spin animations and if we would play only these animations we would see that the car is spinning in place however if we would combine these animations together with the custom motion path that i have created now the car follows the track and turns on each turn that's nice so now let's copy that car from the first slide and let's paste it into our slide and now let's jump into the animation pane and let's make sure that we delete all of the animations related to the car because we want to do everything from scratch and to keep it simple let's do only a couple of turns and once you know how it's done you can make as many turns as you wish so let's say that this car would like to go up until this point in the track so let's make sure that the car is selected and let's go to add animation let's scroll down to motion paths and let's choose custom motion path animation and now let's click in the center of the car to start drawing the motion path now let's click on this corner next let's click on this corner and finally let's double click to finalize the motion path okay and next we can right click on the motion path choose edit points and we can adjust the ending position of the animation if we wish and as well we can make these corners smooth so let's just make sure that those corners are smooth and we can adjust those points so that we follow that dashed line okay so that the car goes in the middle of the road and now let's open up the animation pane and we should see our custom motion path animation here it is let's check it out and as you can see the car follows the road but it is not turning because we haven't added those spin animations yet so let's do that next so let's make sure that the car is selected and let's add a spin animation and before that let me actually grab the animation pane and let's drag it out so that we can see it better and let's check out that custom motion path animation once again so the car follows the track but it is not turning so let's fix that let's make sure that the car is selected okay and let's go to add animation and let's add a spin animation all right so let's make sure that the spin animation starts with previous animation duration 0.2 seconds which is really fast 
and for the percentage for the spin percentage let's use 90 and for the direction let's use counterclockwise because we want for the car to face up okay and let's make sure that we add some delay because we want for this spin animation to happen later on in the animation sequence and you can use your mouse to grab that little spin animation on the animation timeline and drag it around in different places until you find a perfect spot for that uh, spin animation and now i think this first turn is looking pretty good but this is only the first turn and for the second turn we have to add a second spin animation so let's add one more spin animation and let's follow the same procedure let's add a spin animation let's make sure it starts with previous animation duration 0.2 seconds and then the animation settings let's use 90 degrees for the spin amount once again and for the direction let's use clockwise because we want this car to go to the right okay and once again we have to play around with the animation delay for the second spin animation until we get it right and i think this is looking pretty nice so let's check it out on the full screen and as you can see that little car is visible right away and let's fix that by adding a flying animation to this car so let's go to add animation let's choose fly in animation okay and let's make sure that this flying animation is above the custom motion path animation direction from left and for the flying animation let's use maximum smooth end and for the duration i'm using 0.5 seconds half a second and now on the first click we can see all of these elements now on the second click we get the car and on the third click the car starts moving that's easy peasy lemon squeezy and by following the same steps you could animate the rest of the turns in your beautiful track and by the way one more awesome thing that you could do with this kind of slide is add slide zooms into each of these pins imagine how awesome it would be to be able to click on these pins and zoom into additional slides and if you'd like to learn how to do that then check out this video next where i'll show you everything you need to know about slide zooms super thanks for watching this one and i'll see you on the slide zoom video let's go